Cinema 4D S2020 has been released and it comes with a lot of improvements and updates. Today we'll take a look at the brand new features that is coming to the installment and also shed some light about why this new release is called S2020 contrary to the R series. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Cinema 4D S2020. This is the brand new, you know, release from the guys at Maxon and this new one comes with a couple of features. First of all, let's address the idea behind the S that has to do with the new naming convention that they're going with contrary to the R series that they were using. So the S simply stands for subscription and this means that subscription users will be able to have early access to massive improvements and updates coming to Cinema 4D but if you are a perpetual license user you may have to wait till sometime in the year where they're going to release this one for perpetual license holders to be able to update to. With that said let's talk about the improvements that is now available in Cinema 4D the s2020 the very first one that is highly talked about is the uv unwrapping this is long overdue so the uv set of tools that does exist in the previous versions of cinema 4d was a little bit tricky to work with and this has actually forced users to stay bound by simply learning how to work with this or go over to several dcc apps to get this thing done and it's pretty cool to see that there is now a huge update coming to the uv side of things there is also an automatic unwrapping that is now available in Cinema 4D. I do like the way this one works as it works a bit more like how you get your automatic unwrapping done in both Maya and also Houdini. There's also a couple of things that they've also lined out that has to do with how the UV seems to understand where and where it gets to cut and this has to do with edge dictation and also there is now a huge visual feedback when it has to do with UV cuts and also how you can tell if a UV is overlapping and if it is stretching. This is definitely going to be very useful as this visual update would help anyone working in Cinema 4D to get adequate UV unwrapping and editing done pretty pretty well. This is considered as one of their main key updates as they've also improved on several workflows that has to do with UV improvements and all that beautiful stuff. Now with that said, let's move over to the modeling side of things because for every UV you're trying to create, there must be a model. So the modeling has also gotten a huge, huge update. Now I'm a very big fan of this one because it has to do with bevel. And yes, Cinema 4D R21 did come with a huge, huge beveling update but in this new installment the beveling update that we're getting is extremely extremely nice as this time you would literally have little to no artifacts while trying to bevel your object either using the default beveling tool that you get to find within the geometry editor or the ones that has to do with the modifier and this is definitely going to be extremely helpful for those doing MoGraph as Cinema 4D is a proprietary tool for MoGraph in most cases and also for those trying to get some very nice hard surface modeling going in Cinema 4D. So I also see a huge improvement that has to do with bridge. So the bridging tool now has a beautiful update that for me, I think this would make a lot of sense for those who would be doing a huge set of modeling using Cinema 4D as a tool of choice. So the bridge tool has also gotten that update and one beautiful update for me has to do with the fact that you can now bring in your CAD files from SOLIDWORKS, Fusion 360, and inventor and simply you know de-triangulate this stuff now there is a very wonderful tool that they have here that you can simply use to de-triangulate and also force this meshes to find a way of having quads now this is definitely interesting to see as this tool only works as i've tried it only works for some and not for all of them but it is pretty cool to see that you can have this feature right now but of course if you want to get some more updates about this simply go over to the link which i'm going to keep in the description where you can find you know a huge documentation about that one there is an improvement update to do extrude which you can simply use to do some amazing stuff and also the selection now has a beautiful set of updates which would enable you select certain parts easily and at this point, if you also want to simply mirror your selection, this is also something that you can easily do right now. So all of that time that you spend trying to select one part over the other, you can literally cut that by half by just simply selecting one half and then proceed to mirror your selection. This will indeed save you so much time. So with this out of the way, let's talk about the brand new GoZ plugin update that is now in Cinema 4D. So previously, how you get things to Cinema 4D is you go over to ZBrush, you install your GoZ plugin, and then you specify Cinema 4D as a tool which you can now export things to. 
but right now there is an update in cinema that you can find if you go over to the extensions then you can literally send your file over to zbrush and you choose to export this over to zbrush right over here in zbrush make a couple of changes make some fixtures and then send this over to cinema 4d and i think this is going to be a very handy way to get things working directly here in cinema compared to how we initially get to get stuff work previously and if you simply send a model from cinema 4d over to zbrush one of the updates you would also notice is right here within the sub tool it simply separates the object and stores them right over here so it is also pretty cool to see that this is decent and for a very simple feature like this i like it there's also some significant improvements to the viewport which has to do with the lighting the rendering on the viewport right now and at the same time you can choose to simply exclude every other thing and just get to work on your geometry so all of those excessive amount of time that you get to use to turn off things like camera light bones now you can simply use a click of a button to only see your geometry and you can also save your viewport settings that you can load up into different projects there is also a gltf export function now that is available so in case you want to move this over to the web and take a look at what you're working on or maybe you just simply want to export this into a game engine the gltf export function is now here and then there is also the nodal material export and you can literally go over to maxon's website right now and download a free trial version of the s2020 and start playing with this incredible set of features now one of the things which i would like us to actually look at is maxon the guys developing cinema 4d obviously they've actually been in some sort of partnership and you know they've been purchasing a couple of things these days and one of the very notable one is redshift so you can now get redshift by simply having cinema 4d installed and this doesn't come pre-packaged as there is also a plan for that so in case you want to get redshift alongside cinema 4d you can simply proceed to the website and get that going so they have also you know been in the news recently for purchasing red giant so just in case you have no idea who the guys at red giant are they are the creators of trap code the universe magic bullet and also a huge line of you know vfx suits and shooter plugins that you can literally go through and get i kind of like the thing that the guys from cinema or the maxon crew i like what they're doing right now as they're focusing on several stuff that a lot of people have complained over and over in the community and they're trying to make these things work fine so these are the brand new features now and yes there is also updates to the content library the content library has been revamped as they've updated the contents which has to do with the materials objects presets and also the scene volume so they've actually done this in a way where if you want to play with any of the tools or any of the contents directly inside the content library you'll be able to easily change the materials and also configure this to suit your need so if you want to get this you can simply download this tool and get a copy of that and the content library is over 10 gig of data which is actually a lot so basically if you're looking for some models that you really want to play with of course you might just be lucky to find the exact one that you're looking for right there in the content browser and for the updates i'm very very excited about the uv updates the automatic updates that is now in cinema 4d and the whole pinning and splitting of uvs i think making uvs now in cinema is going to be extremely easier than ever and the visual feedback is definitely going to steal you know a lot of people back into cinema i am also excited about the bevel update that is now available in cinema and something else that's notable is there is no update for animation so there is literally no talk about animation or updates about it although the guys from maximum have also said that there will probably be an update sometime in the year but this right now is not something that we have an idea of when this is going to be maybe this might come with some updates for the animation but then of course we can only hope and pray and see what these guys come up with in the next updates and just before we go i would like to also inform you guys that if you want to learn anything that has to do with cinema you can literally go to the sign university right now as they're giving 30 days trial to anyone who wants to learn anything on sign universe so all you have to do is just simply go over to the site login there is a list of tutorials list of courses and you know segmented stuff that you might probably want to learn you can go right now 
log in and start learning something pretty cool of course i'm not so much of a fan about the whole subscription and perpetual discrepancy that's going on but tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and that's about it if you like this video you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace